The device on my desk is a type of double pendulum. The axis of the first pendulum is mounted on supports, while the axis of the second pendulum is attached to the frame of the first pendulum. This device is interesting because it performs many different types of movements, which is what we will be discussing today. The simplest type of system behavior is observed when the deviation angles of both pendulums from the vertical are small. In this case, the restoring force is proportional to the angle of deviation, and the system's motion consists of harmonic oscillations in two normal modes. The first mode occurs in antiphase, while the second mode is in phase. At the same time, the oscillation frequency of the second mode is noticeably higher than that, that of the first mode. And the overall behavior of the system in this case um, is determined by the superposition of the two modes, so both fast and slow oscillations are present in the motion at the same time. Another simple type of behavior can be observed. If I deflect the small pendulum outward and then spin the whole system so that the small pendulum continues to be pushed outward by the centrifugal force. Now everything rotates as a single whole, gradually slowing down due to friction. But the most interesting motion is observed if you push this system hard enough, but not too hard. Then this motion appears to be completely unpredictable. Well, at least until the system loses a significant portion of its energy and transitions to small oscillations. And to observe the behavior of such a pendulum over long periods without energy loss, it makes sense to switch from our physical model to a computer simulation where frictional losses can be completely eliminated. Let's take two identical double pendulums and raise the small weight of the right pendulum a bit higher so that at the start it has more potential energy. At first, these pendulums behave very similarly, but then the larger weight of the right pendulum starts to rise higher and higher and at some point makes a complete rotation. Meanwhile, the left pendulum makes fairly regular movements, and it seems that the trajectory of its upper weight will not go beyond the flower-like pattern. It has already drawn by this time. In contrast, the motion of the right pendulum appears complex, unpredictable, or as physicists say, chaotic. And so, the words regular, and chaotic motion have already been mentioned. But for now we are distinguishing one type of motion from the other on a figurative and intuitive level. It is not at all easy to give a strict mathematical definition of chaos, and we will not attempt to do so. Nevertheless, we will look at several characteristic properties that distinguish chaotic motion from regular motion. Let's prepare two pendulums with sufficiently high potential energy so that they move chaotically and let their initial deviations differ only very slightly. So their motion immediately after being set in motion will also differ only very slightly. However, as time goes on, the difference between these motions will become greater and greater. And at some point, they will become completely unlike each other. And looking at them, we would never guess that at one time the states of these pendulums were very close. What's remarkable is that such complex behavior is observed in a system with only four degrees of freedom. These are the two angles of deviation of the pendulums from the vertical and their corresponding angular velocities. Moreover, in the computer model we have just examined there is no energy loss, and therefore the evolution of the system is represented by a phase trajectory lying in a three-dimensional configuration space. If we launch several identical double pendulums from similar initial states, their phase trajectories will diverge very quickly and end up in distant regions of phase space. 
This is similar to how a drop of ink spreads throughout a glass of water. As a result, the ink is present everywhere in the volume, even though mixing hasn't increased its amount. A similar kind of mixing occurs on a global scale, when meteorologists observe the weather and try to predict it. Small inaccuracies in measuring temperature, pressure, wind, and other parameters eventually lead to the predicted scenario differing greatly from what actually happens and therefore accurate weather prediction even a week in advance turns out to be possible in principle. Now, from weather forecasting, let's return once again to the double pendulum. Well, in the first setup we looked at, the weights were on opposite sides of the main axis, so it swung rather slowly. But in this second setup, the second arm is attached below the first one, so it comes to a stop quite quickly. Let's give it a spin and it will trace out various unique patterns which are probably best observed in slow motion. We slow down the pendulum's motion by eight times and trace the path of the end of the lower arm. Take a look at the unusual, non-repeating patterns it creates. The lower arm sometimes spins rapidly, sometimes pauses, and its rotation during this motion can alternate between one direction and the other. And now we are gradually moving on to our final question. We have already drawn such a picture before and showed on it how two similar states of a double pendulum gradually diverge and become distant and dissimilar from each other. So naturally the question arises, but aren't there such distant states, states that are so incredibly far apart from each other, that would gradually over time come together and eventually become close or even indistinguishable? And to clearly and convincingly demonstrate that such states really do exist, we perform some additional actions and experiments with our computer model, just to make this important point absolutely clear and unmistakable. Let's take two pendulums, whose initial states are completely different from each other. And look, after starting the motion, these pendulums become more and more similar to each other. How did we manage to do this? The secret is very simple. We started the pendulums from similar states, waited until they diverged, then stopped the simulation and reversed all the velocities. However, now our pendulums have diverged again and their motions have once more become different from each other. But why is it that in real experiments, when we prepare pendulums in two similar states, they usually diverge, but almost never come back together? Share your thoughts on this in the comments to this video on YouTube.